What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to look at the June 7th episode of Impact, coming off the heels of Under Pressure as we head to Slammiversary. So, pretty good show tonight. Have a lot of positives to say. I really enjoyed the storytelling. The matches were good. Overall, good show. Uh, we open the show with a tag team title match. Z and E, Andrew Everett, and DJ Z versus Drago and Aerostar. You know, we got exactly what we expect out of these four men. Great way to start the show. I, I, I can't say enough about how Impact generally opens the show every time with a match, and, and I really think that helps the pace along with the show. I, I really hate just coming out, opening the show with a promo and things like that. It just really kills kills the flow. Great back and forth match. All four competitors were able to show their athleticism. Some good high spots. Just like I said, all around good match. Very enjoyable because they worked a little slow. They built it up. That's really what they did. Um, funny part on commentary is the Chris Jericho's name was brought up just a few days after the whole thing went down between Sammy and Chris, leading to Impact being uh, invited to the Chris Jericho cruise in October. Um, so we will talk more about that on the Impact Report this weekend. Um, but anyway, that was brought up because Don Callis was talking about Aerostar's mask and how it doesn't look like there's any battery pack, so he wanted to know how it stayed lit. And Josh Matthews said, well, why don't you ask your buddy Chris Jericho? He has all those jackets. And uh, Callis basically said that if he was against Aerostar, what he would do is throw water on him and electrocute him, and that's how he would get a victory. Um, to which Josh was like, that's illegal. And Callis was like, well, it would be after I did it. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, a really fun match. Um, another match, the Orlando crowd did not deserve, I mean... There was, there was a little excitement there, but not nearly as much as there should have been. Um, I cannot wait for the Canada tapings to be aired, as it's said that the crowd was very into it, and I'm very looking forward to that. I mean, even even the crowd wasn't able to take away from this match because it was it was a lot of fun. But um, Zini able to retain their championships with DJ Z hitting the DZT on Aerostar, and then Everett puts them away with the 630. Um, Aerostar was a little banged up from this match. Um, I think Ruff Riley threw up the X after the match had ended because, I mean, that way, the way that Everett came down on him, it just looked like he got the wind knocked out of him and he was uh, in rough shape. So we go back to the virtual studio, and they talk about the new champions that were crowned last week, being Austin Aries, the world champion, and Sue Young, the knockout champion. And then they hype the rest of the show. We go backstage. This was a good segment. We see Sanjay Dutt and Petey Williams kind of arguing back and forth. Sanjay wanted to know why Petey Williams was there when he was attacked or where he was attacked. Um, Petey says, you know, what the hell, man? I stuck up for you earlier. More arguing, and Petey says, you know what? I'm taking my stuff, and I'm going home, and we saw him leave. So that was good. They're, they're continuing to do little things here and there to add more to the, well, who's going to be that attacker? I have a few ideas, but who knows? Um, so up next, we got a recap of Sue Young versus Allie from last week. There was a few segments that kind of you know, just dragged along. We got a lot of recaps from the week before, but it makes sense because it was a big special. Um, I did not like this. We had a transition into the GWN Rewind, and this was Dreamer vs. RVD, and it went on for too long. Plain and simple. I'm not going to go into this anymore. Um, however, I, I think that they just need to work on things that, like, like, for instance, tonight we had the Eli Drake Fact of Life segment later on in the show. I don't understand why they just couldn't, you know, hype up the GWN and say, oh, hey, look at this. Maybe have a list of all the times that Eli has held it and said, you know what, you go back on this episode and see this. And just things like that. I really don't feel like they need to show footage. Just, they plugged it even a couple times. It's just little things. It's it's not necessary, and it takes away from the action. Um, still don't have a GWN logo on it, so some people just tuning in will think it's part of the show. All right, so we go to LAX in the clubhouse, and we see Diamante return. Very happy to see her. I know a lot of people were wondering when she was going to return, as was I, 
and she is back. She kind of is like, well, what the hell's going on, guys? And they're like, we don't know. But they say that King has them covered. They have money. They have booze. You know, everything we saw last week. And she's like, well, it's very convenient. K-Dog go- gets hurt, goes missing, and King shows up. At this point, King walks up. Him and Diamante have words, kind of staring at each other. They do not trust each other. And then King kind of hypes LAX for their match. They walk off. And uh, the segment finishes with King and Diamante kind of fist bumping, just like, you know, do it for Conan. Um, and so there's very, very much doubt in the eyes. that they, they don't trust each other. And I'm really looking forward to this eventual blow up within LAX. It, it should be fun. I'm sure something will happen between them at Slammiversary. I like bringing in King. I think he fits this role very well. Um, Andrew Everett said something along the lines of, look at this shady dickhead on Twitter, and it was just hilarious. So that brings us to the Cult of Lee versus LAX. Um, It's funny to think that a few months ago on Impact, we were not able to have multiple tag matches on a show because there were no teams. Tonight, we have two big tag matches with four great teams, and uh, it's just good to see that they're little by little they're building every division i mean we saw the recently the knockouts division start adding stars to it now the tag division so impact's really coming coming around and doing what they need to do um good match between the the two of them the two teams that is um we finally saw lax get their get their ship back basically um lee and conley controlled the first part of the match they were able to isolate isolate santana ortiz got Got the hot tag. LAX went to work. Then the two teams went back and forth. Cult of Lee set up for their, a sweet street sweeper of their own. LAX is able to counter it and hit a double team wheelbarrow and cutter on Caleb Conley for the win. So like I said, LAX now has some momentum with King in their corner. So like it's it's going to get interesting, and I'm excited to see that. And up next, we have the Eli Drake Fact of Life segment. So... When this was announced, I noticed a lot of people on Twitter were really hyped for this, and, I mean, rightfully so. Eli's a guy that, well, he should be here long term, but we still don't know what his status is. And I I just, I get why he wants to go to WWE, but just feel like he goes to NXT, he's got a long list of people in front of him. We have, you know, the, the champions, EC3 is ahead of him, you have Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, you have so many people in line already, and he's just going to drop to the bottom. He's 35 years old, so I mean, he's still got a decent amount left in the tank, but who knows? And if he's able to go straight to the main roster, well, we've seen what the hell has been happening with Bobby Lashley, and it's not pretty. So, hopefully we get some good news sooner rather than later, but not much we can do about that. So, the Fact of Life segment, he's going to name the top five dummies in Impact Wrestling. Number five, the Impact Zone fans, and I think this this is how we all feel, so. <laughs> Number four, Austin Aries. Well, there's enough there. Number three, Impact Management. Eh, well, not a surprise there. And number two, the fans of Impact. I I feel like it was a little different. I mean, it was the first, uh, number five, I believe he said the Impact Zone fans. And then number two, he kind of made it a generalization of the entire fan base. And then number one is Moose. And rightfully so. And here's a heel with good, you know, making good points. Uh, He refers back to... Eli Drake, obviously, himself, winning the world title briefcase from Moose. And uh, so at this point, they set up a match for next week. Uh, Moose versus Eli Drake. I believe commentary made note of this. Winner faces Aries at Slammiversary. At this point, Moose comes out. You know, he says to Eli Drake, you're the number one dummy you want, because you don't have the tag titles since you lost them, and you couldn't beat Pentagon. At this point, Drake attacks, or no, he says he doesn't need gold because he is gold, and then Sucker punches Moose, hits the gravy train, and drops the podium on him. Great segment, great way to build to the match, considering they only had a week to build. Um, So good stuff, and should be a big match either way at Slammiversary. 
Then up next, we have Rohit Raju versus Brian Cage. Um, yeah, this isn't a, a huge shocker there. Rohit comes out of the gate fast, but it's quickly downhill. Brian Cage hits Weapon X for the win. And next week, we find out it will be Brian Cage versus Matt Seidel. Uh, Matt Seidel comes out, grabs the microphone, and he, sa- he talks about how great Cage is. And he says, Seidel has looked through his third eye and that Cage has inner weakness. He says he can help complete the machine, though. Seidel says he can forego his X Division title match, and Seidel can help him open his third eye. Cage doesn't like that idea, hits Seidel with an F5, and that's that. So, a quick build and to a match next week. Um, it's funny, I was thinking about it. So, Brian Cage's biggest victory in Impact Wrestling so far has been against Bobby Lashley. Matt Seidel's biggest victory in Impact Wrestling has been against Bobby Lashley. So it'll be interesting to see how they book Matt Seidel in this case. I wouldn't be surprised if he did lose the title or win by maybe DQ or something like that. Um, But it's likely that Brian Cage goes over. Then we see Eddie Edwards heading to the woods to find Sammy. He tells the cameraman, film it no matter what. Um... And just the main event was crazy with him, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, And then we have a Josh Matthews and Austin Aries Skype call. This wasn't really necessary, but it helped build the main event, or which probably will be the main event next week, and the match at Slammiversary, because Josh asks Aries about if he has a preference on who he wants to face, either Moose or Eli Drake. Aries runs them both down, kind of, you know, says, well, Eli Drake, you know his track record against me. Uh, and then Josh asks him about the way he won the championship, and Aries went on to say, it doesn't matter how the man won, a win is a win, and that's what we'll show in the record books. And then he asks who he thinks is going to win the number one contendership match next week, and Aries says Eli Drake, because he isn't afraid to do the dirty work to get the job done, just like himself. So, just a little thing to hype up the number one contendership match next week, and the main event at Slammiversary. Then we get the highlights of the Slammiversary press conference, um, and we get a look at the return of Madison Rain, and she wants to be a six-time champion. So I'd assume she will be getting a title match in the near future. Um, I mean, what with Rosemary down, I'm sure they really want to do something with her and Sue Young. And Sienna, we still don't know her status after what had happened back in, I think it was the January tapings. Um, so, yeah, two big names in the knockouts division that have gone down. Uh, then we go backstage, and we have Mackenzie interviewing Tessa. Uh, Tessa kind of says that she's a winner because she makes things happen. Uh, Kira comes up and says she doesn't, she didn't come here to say that, you know, Tessa had her first loss handed to her, and she didn't come here to say that, after all the talking Tessa did, and at this point, Tessa attacks Kira, the two brawl, and until security breaks it up. We find out that next week it'll be Kira versus Tessa, and I believe a no disqualification match. Um, Then we go backstage more, and we see Moose, and he is irate about what happened at the hands of Eli Drake. Uh, He says he is not only going to beat him next week, but he is also going to hurt him. And it's time to go out to the woods. So, Sammy Callahan versus Eddie Edwards in the woods. Um, I really like that Impact is getting more edgier. I mean, a lot of cursing in this episode obviously beeped out, but it it just feels like a more mature product, and it's something that we kind of need in the wrestling world right now. Um, So, of course, Sammy is playing mind games with him. Uh, Eddie runs into Jake Crist first as he's hanging out in a tree, Um I believe he either saw Sammy or it was Dave. I think it was Sammy. And uh, he starts chasing him, but then he gets attacked by Jake. Eddie starts choking Jake with a, a piece of wood until he's he's passed out. We see Eddie head over to a car uh, to grab more lumber. Dave, Chris, pops out of the trunk. Uh, Eddie beats him down and throws him into the trunk. Um, and then he's met face to face with Sammy, the two battle back and forth. The the whole thing was kind of shot like a horror movie. They did a really good job. Uh, at one point, um, I think it was Sammy. He threw like the skull of a, 
a bull or whatever it was, uh, some sort of cattle at at Sammy Callahan, uh, at, at Eddie Edwards. I think he went to charge at him with it in a tr- as he was in the tree. Uh, like I said, they battled back and forth for a while. And at one point, Eddie grabs the horn of the skull and starts jamming it into Callahan's head, blood's pouring down his face. And, uh, you know, basically Eddie was going in for the kill until Alicia and Tommy Dreamer show up. Tommy tries, at, well, at this point, I think Eddie had grabbed the bat as he was going to uh, end Sammy. Tommy tries to pull the bat away from him. Eddie kind of nails him with the bat in the chest. So Tommy's on the ground. Eddie looks back. Sammy has disappeared. And Eddie continues his search for Sammy. And we end the show. So it looks like we are turning, you know, Eddie Edwards has just absolutely gone batshit crazy. And it seems like uh, he has turned into the bad guy. Um, I would assume him and Dream are going to have some sort of blowout later on, maybe Slammiversary. That's just the way it looks like they're going to do things, um, but that should be fantastic, and I love how they just keep adding more and more parts to this feud. Um, like I said, good stuff. I enjoyed the episode, um, you know, aside from the GWN stuff, and what has always been my gripe is that yeah, we have too many backstage segments before the main event. I just feel like it kind of kills the flow of the show um only three matches but that was because we are building towards slammiversary so that is all i have for you guys today i will see you this weekend for the impact report and as always thanks for checking out my video and don't forget to like share and subscribe thanks guys bye